sitting in the car uh, while my wife's at an appointment and I thought it'd be appropriate to give a three month update on my diabetes journey because I've got some really good news to share. Um, and I think that it might uh, encourage others. I wanna say at the uh, very outset that this is a celebration that I wanna bring about rather than a brag. It is not a brag. My sole intention is to encourage you and give you hope that it could work for you as well. My diet and the treatment that I underwent in the last three months uh, since having been diagnosed with diabetes. Um, I'd like to encourage you to click like and share it also with others if you think that it might help them to hear about my journey. Um, also use the other video that I did before. I may remove it and re install it because of certain settings that I put on it uh, made it a little bit more difficult. So I may, if I can't figure out how to do the edit on it, uh, pull it down and then uh, upload it again. Uh, but feel free to share these videos uh, with others. Um, the links to them, that other one will be in the comments, as will a couple other important articles that I've come off across on MSN in recent days that have things about different things for your diet and what have you. Um, I think you'll find them helpful because they sure help me. Now, the most important thing before I get started into the good news is that I have a few acknowledgements to make. And for starters, I, I once again want to give all thanks and glory to God because this journey would not have been possible and is as successful as it's being without his divine intervention and his help. And I'm a firm believer in that. Um, because when I started here in December, in two months, I had already dropped 40 pounds and my health was starting to take an uptake that I'll mention later on. So to God be that glory. I also want to give a solid, firm acknowledgement to my wife and the work she's done to make this successful for me. Uh, she has done a lot of meal prep, uh, including getting special dishes uh, that would help with portion control so that uh, my proteins, carbs, and uh, veggies would all be in balance. And um, she's also held me accountable, even when I didn't want to be accountable. And she's been my extra eyes and ears for um, things when we're shopping or looking out for um, dangerous uh, things, uh, other names for artificial sweeteners that I'm not aware of, but that she is because how they affect her personally with her health issues. So a big kudos and shout out to my wife. Next, I wanna thank my doctor. My doctor I'm blessed to have is a common sense man. He likes to do with minimal medication and he monitored me closely having his nurse call and check on me uh, from the start and uh, getting me in every time there was a glitch and there were a few bumps along the way but he's also not over medicating me and I'll be able to share more of how that medication change has taken place over this last month since my last video. And next, I want to uh, also give thanks and credit to my dietitian for her positivity, her common sense, her balance for my dietary needs, uh, including adding a little bit more carb and uh, dairy back into my diet because I had gone too extreme and I was missing the proper amount of carbs for um, handling the glucose, as well as dairy for handling my calcium levels because as I'm losing the weight and stuff, I can lose muscle as well as fat and one thing or another. And so she's really helped and she's got years of experience and especially in dealing with people battling diabetes. So a huge shout out to her. She works with St. Luke Healthcare down in Ronan. And then there's the encouragement of my friends that uh, have helped by commenting and calling and um, that sort of thing. I, I couldn't do it without them because they also kind of keep an eye on me and 
they never tattle on me or anything like that, but they are encouraging me when I make the tough choices to say no. So I want to thank them. Uh, briefly, I want to recap uh, my last video. Uh, as I said before, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes on December 27th after going in for routine annual blood work and stuff so that I could get my blood pressure meds uh, refilled for another length of time without having to uh, go see the doctor. Um, at that time, I was put on both metformin pills twice a day with food, and I was also put on an um, injection called Monjourno. And the side effects started. Um, they're common side effects. Most people uh, experience diarrhea, vomiting, that sort of thing. I got a weird taste in my mouth right off the bat, and so when the nurse called, uh, I was taken off the metformin. They believed that that was what was causing it. But instead, things got worse, and uh, my stomach stopped emptying and basically shut down. And so after three days of not digesting my food, I would throw up what I'd eaten. And uh, this happened twice. First time, I refused to call the doctor. The second time, while I was uh, in the other room violently ill, my wife called. And... They told me to get right in the next day because of getting me fit into their schedule. And they told me not to take the Monjourno anymore and put me back on metformin. And the result of that, um, and with the dietary changes, I lost the 40 pounds in two months. And along with the medication, um, one of the key factors of that was going to portion control, and which Almost all of my portions were fist-sized. Um, and protein, I got to have a little bit more. I could have the, the size of my palm of my hand. So that put me between five and six ounces for a, a steak as a rule. Although one time after that, I did go overboard and get a little larger. And it took me a couple days to lose back the one pound extra or whatever. But um, I've been primarily sticking to that rule of thumb that nothing bigger than my fist and I've been keeping my steaks and things like that on the rare occasion I can have them at six ounces and uh, then another one is sugar reduction that means that I cut out all soda pop um, and that includes diet and I'll a lot allude to that a little bit later on but I cut out all my lattes including the sugar-free ones as a matter of fact uh, years ago I heard that if you quit drinking a latte a day you could lose up to two pounds a week so I I cut out the lattes I have not had any since the first week of January I think that um, my son made me one at home once and uh, I had one the day I was diagnosed, and then my daughter lovingly bought me a small one that was sugar-free one time before she went back to school during her Christmas break. But other than that, I've had no lattes in the last three months. Um, the other thing I mentioned earlier was I stay away from artificial sweeteners um, because they can be far worse. They're fattening. Most people don't realize that. They are fattening they're dangerous and uh, I've read since and been told since that they actually play games with your glucose levels so if you do a, a blood glucose monitoring device and you have your artificial sweeteners you're always going to test high um, the other thing that I do is limit sugars in my food items and as a general rule with that I try to keep the servings um, or amount of sugars six grams or less in a, a food item although there's been a few times when I haven't been able to do that if uh, an item has corn syrup in it that goes back on the shelf as well um, and again artificial sweeteners I think that I've had three food items with artificial sweetener uh, I had some ketchup uh, that had sucralose I had some barbecue sauce and some salad dressing all th of them having sucralose um, but by and large, I stayed away from that. 
I also uh, want to, on the recap, want to mention the, the deal about focusing on what you can have and not what you can't have. I find that as I even to this day go into a grocery store or anything, I start looking at cans or looking at packages and the labels and in the ingredients. And I'm, I'm on a, a quest like a scavenger hunt to determine what I can have rather than what I can't. And I can get excited like, oh, I can have that jerky or I better not have that one and so on and so forth. So it gives me something to look forward to knowing that there are things out there that I've been able to find and um, enjoy. So focus on what you can and not you can't. And then again, the other thing is that I've tried new things. I found out that cauliflower pe crust pizza isn't bad. And I've also found out that I kind of like cauliflower rice better than regular rice. I never was a fan of rice. I'm a meat and potatoes guy. Myself. But anyway, when I had to have rice and stuff uh, to use the uh, rice cauliflower, it turned out to be pretty tasty. Okay, so that brings me to day news. As of March 19th, I am no longer considered a diabetic. I went from an A1C of 7.2 on December 27th to March 19th, testing at 5.5. .5. So I'm no longer considered by my doctor to have diabetes. And as of the 319, I had lost 46 pounds. And uh, since then, it's kind of bounced back and forth. I think I'm about 48 pounds down now, and I'm still trying to get down. Uh, my ideal weight should be 170, so I've got about eight pounds to go. But I am doing much better. I am down at least two inches in waist size, and I believe I can go down another two. I just haven't found the right decent pair of uh, pants at a thrift store to buy at that size uh, to see, because that's my goal, to get down another two inches, and I'm real close. And I actually had to put another notch in my belt to tighten my pants or belt up another inch. So those are all pluses and the good news. And then the other thing is, is I no longer am on metformin. As of the 19th, uh, not only was I taken off the metformin, but the doctor canceled the refills and instead he replaced me with the supplement. I'm not going to name the supplement here because I'm still out on the verdict of how successful it is. I have noticed that my weight loss has slowed. It hasn't stopped, but it's slowed. But just to be off the uh, metformin and on something else that helps with my blood sugar levels and uh, my uh, cholesterol and stuff is very encouraging. I also did blood work here, um, a biometric screening at my job. And in that, every single thing tested was right in the middle of the averages of where I should be. And it was not quite at that point back in December. So in two and a half months, a lot happened. And on top of that, the other thing that happened was when I went in on the 19th for my follow-up, I was able to be cut by 10 milligrams a day on the dosage for my blood pressure meds. So from being on two different blood pressure pills in December, I went from that to 20 milligrams a day of lisinopril. And as of the 19th of March, I am now down to 10 milligrams of lisinopril a day. And I get to monitor that for the next three months and my blood sugar. That leaves me with a few challenges, and that is that my weight loss has indeed slowed, and that's frustrating. Um, I still need to drop 10 pounds, 8 to 10 pounds, to be in the middle range of my body mass index. And the other challenge that I have is though that I can eat again, I have to continue with the new portion control and limit my servings or sizes. Because if I don't, I will be right back where I'm at. And I have to confess, I am hungry all the time. But I'm not hungry for the sweets. I'm hungry for the good foods, but they put the pounds on. And so I'm mindful of that verse in scripture that says, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable. And uh, 
I have to remember that. And I also have to remember that there's no temptation that's taken me, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, and who will, with the temptation, provide a way to escape that I might be able to bear it. Um, use those key words, Google it, you can find the references. The other thing that is a, still a challenge is I still have to exercise more. I was rocking it for about four days, a uh, week or so ago, and then the weather changed, and I haven't been able to get outside and get on the walking paths, but I want to do that again. Um, but in the meantime, I haven't had time uh, to run down to work and walk inside either. So as I wrap this up, I just want to thank you and for taking the time, and I want to encourage you that you can turn things around. Uh, it does take effort. You are not going to succeed if you don't cut out the artificial sweeteners, the corn syrup, and the sugars. And I know that's hard. Uh, I've talked to a few individuals along the way that have rationalized and things like that, and they're not seeing the success. And uh, it's one of those things you got to choose your battles. And I can't do it for you, and um, it's up to you. And I'm not trying to do that to be condescending or judgmental. It's just the way it is that if you want to be successful, sometimes you got to make some hard choices and be willing to do that. And there are times that I mess up. And the other day I went to Dairy Queen and got a blizzard. And instead of a mini, I got a small, which was a half size up. And yet still, I used to go get a, a large all the time. And... I still haven't ordered a latte. I think I'll save that till the weekend my daughter graduates from college just so that I can celebrate as we go to celebrate with her. That being said, um, I press on because I want to continue to have a healthy lifestyle, get the extra weight off, and um, do more, better. I can't express that enough. And I also have to say on the praises on this as I wrap up that not only have I seen all these reductions in medication and pounds and all that, but I don't hurt. My arthritis flares that I was having constantly have gone away. I think I had one little tinge of arthritis in my one left index finger a couple weeks ago, and that was it. And it used to be constant. I used to wring my hands, they hurt so much, and I didn't know how I was gonna be able to continue to work uh, until I could go on social security and stuff. And and yet now, I don't feel that way. And I actually feel like I have more energy now than I did in my 20s. So be encouraged and have a great day.